Hey everybody, Thrift Store Hacker back again, and we're finally getting back to the sit-down scooter project. Uh, there were some concerns that I had uh, during the last build, like the front tire was really hard to turn and stuff, so what I did is I took the original uh, front fork here and put it back on the bike, of course upside down, because this part of the frame is upside down, because remember the seat used to go right here. But I put this uh, longer fork on the front, kept the small tire, aside of it looking really cool, it steers a lot better. I uh, raised the handlebars up a little bit, um, just little odds and ends. There's this bar down here, and this bar, is, as you can see right here, is the hinge for the uh, bike, because it used to be one of those uh, full suspension rear mountain bikes. And I'm using the seat bar, which is bolted down right here. I'm using this crossbar which is part of the seat but hooked up to the frame up here and I'm using this long bar right here that's connected right under the voltage controller here and right here and that's keeping the bike from uh, not breaking in half like that. Uh, I did do some, uh, we'll call it a uh, strength testing. I got on the bike after I put this particular part of the build in, sat on the seat and bounced up and down on the seat to make sure this wouldn't pull itself apart or we wouldn't have any problems while riding it. Because that was really my biggest concern with this build, is I thought I was going to break that bar. And it was pretty much on its way out when I uh, repaired it. Anyway, moving on, uh, what we're going to do today is, as you can see, I have the control box and the throttle from that uh, friction drive electric bike project. Uh, since we converted the uh, bike over there, you can see the uh, the e-bike over there in the corner. Since we converted that over, we had that control box left. So we're going to use the throttle and the control box, and we're going to run this motor like we did, uh, well, uh, two e-bikes ago on that same beach cruiser. And hopefully that'll work out pretty good. Uh, this is not geared really high, so it's only going to do about, I don't know, maybe 10 miles an hour. But it's going to have a boatload of torque in it. Uh, I'm building this so it will run... Uh, basically flat land, it'll run at about five to eight miles an hour. You can take it outside and, uh, ride it around. Uh, I got a neighbor that's going to Burning Man this year, so we're probably going to send him off with this bike and he'll take some cool pictures of it at Burning Man. I don't know why I keep calling it a bike. It's more of a scooter because you can't pedal it. But anyway, moving on, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to pull this, uh, old voltage controller out and... Basically, uh, I'll keep this, you know, of course I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to set it aside because the advantage to this voltage controller is it'll work between like 5 and 60 volts. So I can throw whatever battery I want on the back of this and power this motor. Uh, I can't do that with the control box because it has a cutoff at 20 volts. So you have to run a 24 volt system. You can't run a 36 because it's got a cutoff at like almost 30 volts. So you have to keep it between the 20 and 30 volt range. Unlike this one that I can throw just about any power at and it'll work. So we'll set that aside. That might be an option going back on. Uh, luckily, though, I can use this control board with that throttle. So if I really need to swap out the control box again, I can do that. Uh, another advantage to the 500 watt control box as opposed to this, which I think this is like rated at 1,000 watts. Um, the motor can pull up to 1,250 watts. If I put the 500-watt PWM on it, it's only going to pull 500 watts. It's still going to have all the torque that I need, but it's also going to help uh, extend the range a little bit. Uh, as you saw with the, the electric uh, beach cruiser build like three motors ago, which was this motor, uh, this control box did take some of the power off of it, but I did get a bit more range out of it, and that's what I'm aiming for. Uh, another idea that I'm having with this um, is, since it's so interestingly set up, I could build something either coming off the handlebars or right off the front here and put a canopy across the top of it that connects down. And we can put, you know, maybe uh, 200 watts of solar panels on top of it. You know, just get some of those flexible solar panels and make a nice sunshade over the top of the bike and... Uh, recoup a lot of power uh, if it's going out to like Burning Man or something. It's going to be out in the open desert, so it's going to charge up really good running like 200 watts of solar panels. You can let it sit there for an hour or so, and then you just go cruise around until the battery's dead again. So 
If we can make this even more useful, that'll be great. But it's going to be a really cool ride. Anyway, I've been chatting for about five minutes. Let's get to the build. All right, first things first, let's get this uh, voltage control or control board out of here. And this control board has been with me for a while now. Um, I've used it on the electric trike project. I've used it on the, uh, well, just about every project that didn't have a, uh, a full-blown scooter controller ran this. Disconnect the uh, leads going to the motor here. All right. I can pull that board free. The battery connections. So I'll just set that aside. What we're going to throw in here after we pull this wire here. Now when I originally did this PWM, I used, I had to extend this wire because it's got a potentiometer on the end of it. I had to extend this wire and I used this, uh, it's a solid uh, thread. I think there's six wires in there, thermostat wire. I highly recommend against using a solid uh, core wire just because if you bend it around too much, it's going to snap and you'll have electrical problems and stuff like that. Um, I've been kind of fortunate with this one, but I really do need to change this wiring out. So just pull that out really quick. I'll set that aside. Pull this cardboard out. I was using the cardboard here as just an insulator so the board didn't touch any metal contacts and stuff. Um, as you can see, the, the build on this kind of bent up the frame a bit, but, I mean, all in all, we got this bike at the thrift store for, like, $7. Uh, to strengthen the uh, bar going across the bottom, what I did is I put a grade 8 bolt through here. So if this does rip out, it's either going to rip the bracket it's sitting in, which is the kickstand bracket, or it'll rip out right here. But hopefully, with all the uh, extra stuff that I got going... All these extra support bars and stuff here, even if that did bend, uh, the seat and the other bar will save it from completely going like that and folding like a sandwich with me in it, or folding like a taco with me in it. So wiring in, this new controller is not that hard to do. Uh, you have power motor leads here. I'll have to re-look up because I can't remember which ones go to which, and I don't want to blow up the box if I hook it up backwards. But we can set that little box. It looks like it's happy right about there. If you turn it sideways. Yeah, we can mount it in like, uh, kind of like this. Or maybe flip it the other way so the wires don't go into the tire. Oh, there we go. That looks nice. So we'll mount that in like that. Um, if we can keep the voltage controller kind of low, maybe we can get one of the batteries, because I'm going to use the 20 amp hour batteries on this. Maybe I can get one in here, and then have just one up here in the battery holder, which will re or reduce the center of gravity on this and make it a little more enjoyable to ride. Well, the throttle is pretty simple. You see, I got the throttle right here. And this is that nice one I picked up with the voltage gauge and the uh, on-off switch and everything built into it. That just slides right on. I said it just slides right on. If I twist this bolt out far enough, I guess. There we go. That just slides right on there. And then right here, there's an Allen wrench to, or an Allen nut to tighten up. And it'll hold it right there on that. So I had to go back and look up the wiring on this because uh, the wiring diagram here was uh, wiped off with some tape and it was in Chinese, so it wouldn't have helped me that much anyway. Um, so as you can see, the positive and the negative right here, the positive goes to this blue wire and the negative goes to the yellow wire, and those are the two thick wires coming out of this side. It looks on, like on this 500-watt controller, like this is where your battery goes in, positive and negative, pretty straightforward. 
And then you have the other two coming out, which are the positive and negative for the motor. And then all the other little tiny wires for the charge port and accessories and the safety switches and stuff all comes out this side. Anyway, we're going to hook this up. I grab my electrical box. Check that out. Isn't that just awesomeness from the 1990s? I bet if I hang on to this for 10 more years, keeping electrical parts in it, it'll become relevant and expensive again. Anyway, we have the power wires, which I grabbed the power wires off that other control board. Um, to make sure I don't hook these up backwards, I took some Sharpie and made that one black for the negative, and then we know this one's the positive. Uh, you are going to want to mark these. Uh, if you don't have anything to mark them with, a little flag of electrical tape on the negative is uh, another go-to for me. All right. Let's hook these up really quick. So double check again. Yes, that's the negative wire. Because you only get one shot with these uh, power supplies. Uh, if you hook them up wrong... Well, if you hook them up backwards, especially on the, uh, well, on the battery side, if you hook them up backwards, it will blow up the box almost instantly, or if you might, might get lucky, and it'll just blow the fuse. All right, we'll hook our positive up now. Now the wiring I'm using, it is the same gauge wire. This uh, The leads that I have just are a lot thicker. I uh, have a lot more insulation on them. Alright. Now, these connectors are not the best way to hook anything up. You can experience electrical shorts with them. I do recommend that you solder them together, but... Uh, I'll get around to that. I just want to get this together for you guys and see if we can get it tested out, see if it's going to work out a lot better in this configuration. So, aside, that'll go up there. I put a little piece of rubber toolbox liner under it just so it doesn't rattle around and make a bunch of noise. You don't want to ride around hearing that. Then I'll just zip tie that beast down right there. It'll probably sit more kind of sideways like that. And... Now we have our positive and negative wires for the batteries, which the batteries are going to go up top here. Uh, we have our motor wire, which I'm going to find a clever way to stash this and kind of hide some of the wiring a little bit, keep it out of the way. And then we have the run that goes up to our throttle and key and everything up there. So let me fiddle around with this, get the, get the, uh, the wiring kind of zip tied up and run, and then we'll come back from there. So I got all the wiring done up. You can see it's all zip tied in. That one wire going up to the throttle for the voltage gauge and all that stuff is run up there. Uh, another thing I added up front here was my cell phone. And that's going to run a GPS speedometer, um, Google Maps, and stuff like that. I'll also be able to shoot some reasonably decent quality video while I'm riding around. That's an old junk cell phone I had lying around. All right, when the batteries charge up, I'll take it outside and we'll take a run on it. All right, we got everything hooked up, everything uh, ready to go. It's time to go take this for a test ride. Let's rock and roll. This is really hard to ride with one hand.
Still kind of sketchy though. doesn't turn around too good either. We're back at the house now. Uh, I would have done a little more video of the ride, but uh, it's a little sketchy to ride this with one hand. Since the uh, front forks come down like this, the wheel here, when you turn, likes to kind of lay over pretty quick, so you need to have both hands up on the handlebars to control it from flopping over. And if it flops over, it will drag, and it'll probably flip you off the bike if you're going fast enough, or scooter. Um, the motor and drivetrain works pretty good. I have some chain tensioning issues that I need to work out. I gotta get the chain a little bit tighter back here and see if I can bring it down a little bit. Maybe put a few, a few more spaces between uh, spacers between the motor and the uh, motor mounts right there. And then I'll space it out just enough that the chain won't rub anymore because I think it's rubbing on this bar right here as it comes under it. But all in all for something that was pretty cheap to hack together. Uh, I already had the motor, uh, the control box, uh, well the control box and throttle and all that stuff was probably about $30. Uh, the bikes, uh, I used the small kids bike for the wheels and the big mountain bike. Uh, I got the mountain bike for $7 at the thrift store. I got the kids bike for $4 at the thrift store. So without the batteries you're really looking at probably about 60 bucks to build this. Uh, if you go with the throttle and the old controller, which would be about $10 more, uh, you can put any type of battery on it, like from 5 to 60 volts, and it would work. And then you can use different motors too. But uh, all in all, it worked out pretty good for a fun little hack together project. Uh, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I gotta go pack this up after it charges because the snow's coming in. But until next time, build stuff, and have fun.